Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. And then, of course, it's followed by verse 15 that says, The Lord hath taken away thy judgments. He hath counseled thy enemy, the king of Israel. Even the Lord is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil anymore. And he says, we have been praying, but we have to begin to sing, to shout, hallelujah, to be glad and to rejoice with all their heart. And, uh, you know, you, if you are listening to me and you're a child of God, you will say, well, from January to June, I have been shouting. I've been praising God. I've been rejoicing. So what is missing? And, uh, well, when I said that to the Lord, I decided, okay, I'm going to sing. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to shout. Whatever it is, I'm going to dance. Hallelujah. Now, sometimes when we do these things in the house of God, it looks like entertainment. And if you, if you are not careful, if you're a child of God and you're not in the spirit, you can dance in the flesh. You can sing in the flesh. You can just do those things for the sake of doing them. But these are supernatural moves. Hallelujah. Our dance must be supernatural. Our singing must be supernatural for it to be effective. It must be acceptable to God. Hallelujah. It must not be a form of religion or something we just do while we are waiting for the word to be preached and for prayers to be prayed. It must be done as a sacrifice, as part of worship to God. Amen? And I think that is probably what is missing. And many of us have not understood that for you to really rejoice in the Lord, you have to be anointed to rejoice. <laughs> a lot of us know we should be anointed to preach. We should be anointed to uh, lay hands on the sick and heal the sick and set the captives free. But it takes the anointing of God on your life for you to get the revelation of rejoicing. And I believe that is what God wants us to get in this second half of this year. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So as we enter into the second half of the year, our story must change. Because our understanding of what our Father wants us to do must be received in the mighty name of Jesus. Do I hear amen? amen? In Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22, Proverbs 17, 22, I want to show you a few things, uh, you know, that shows us the dangers of the absence of joy. I think that should be the captain, cap, caption for this message. Danger of the absence of joy. Hallelujah, I hope the media room caught that. The dangers of the absence of joy. If you do everything, you have faith, you praise God, you preach, you teach, you do everything, you give, you forgive, but you do not have joy in your life, you will still be in danger. Proverbs 17 verse 22 says, A merry heart toyed good like a medicine. But a broken spirit dried the bones. Hallelujah. Remember, David says he wants to hear joy in his bones. Hallelujah. The bones are cracking physically. Amen. Amen. I pray that you have understanding tonight. If there is no joy in your heart, the joy of salvation, the joy of the Lord, your bones your, your inner person, your inner being, your physical being will suffer. That's what that scripture is saying. And if you look at that Psalm 51, that's what David says. He says, I want to hear joy and gladness in my bones again. And when the bones <clears throat> are cracking, when they are dry, <laughs> it means that a person is about to die. Hallelujah. Physically. Proverbs 18, verse 14 says, The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Proverbs 18, verse 14. 
The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. That means if you're sick, which happens to every one of us from time to time, if your spirit is strong, you will be healed. And the joy of the Lord is what sustains a strong spirit. Hallelujah. So we see that if there is no joy in your spirit, you can die. If your spirit man is always depressed, unhappy, dejected, you can die from anything. You can even die from a simple cold. Those people go to the hospital sometimes and they can't find what is wrong with them because they lack the joy of salvation. You can have all kinds of sicknesses, diseases, barrenness, joblessness, poverty, if you lack joy. Everybody say joy. The joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Forget about living at all if you lack joy in your life. Hallelujah. It is not just your body that can suffer if you lack joy. Your life can fizzle out. Joel chapter 1. From verse 9 to 12. Joel 1. It says from verse 9. It says, The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priest, the lost ministers, mourn. The field is wasted. The land mourneth. For the corn is wasted, the new wine is dried up, the oil languishes. Be ashamed, O ye husbands, men, howl, O ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up, the fig tree languishes, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also. The apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered because, pay attention to the reason, because joy is withered away from the sons of men. So it's not just physical sickness uh, that can happen to you. It's not just physical uh, illness, diseases. The entire life of a person that refuses to have joy in the inner man it's a danger. Hallelujah. Everything will dry up. Even the anointing will dry up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The field will dry up. Have you noticed that plants also, re they react to you when you are joyful? If you are a farmer or you have a garden like I do, the plants react. If you, if you, are, if you go to them depressed, they're going to die. You know, there was a time I had people watering my garden for me. And I, I realized that whenever I watered those plants myself, there is a reaction. So I stopped them. I said, I'd rather water these plants because it, it, there is no joy in watering them. If you don't have joy in watering them, you just do it because somebody told you to do it. You're not going to receive that water and leave. Hallelujah. But when I go there and I water those plants myself and I speak to them, you can just see the reaction. And so everything about a person's life that does not rejoice, that does not have deep-seated joy in him or her, will die. Hallelujah. And I think that is the problem we are having on earth today. There is too much of murmuring and complaining and fear. And so the earth is dying out. We need to change. Hallelujah. Whether it's two or three of us that caught this revelation or catch this revelation tonight, we need to start rejoicing. Because whatever is in us can be transferred to the rest of the earth. Psalm 67. Psalm 67 says, God be merciful unto us and bless us. Do I hear Amen. Cause his face to shine upon us, Silla. Verse 2, that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee, O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. 
For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Selah. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.